Hi, um, this is a short video presenting a clock I've built. Uh, the clock is a gift for my sister, who is a um, doctor of science and works as a science educator and does some consulting, I believe, as well. Um, the, it's obviously um, science themed. So we've got the periodic elements representing numbers. So magnesium is 12, hydrogen and helium one and two, lithium three, carbon six, fluor Fluorine is nine, sodium is eleven, and then um, these these little pictures here. Obviously, we've got a chemical flask, an atom, and some DNA. The clock is both analog and digital. The analog part of it works with two stepper motors driving this gear mechanism. We've just seen the second hand move. The um, so if I go around the back, you can see the two stepper motors. That work independently. The, um, the one here drives the pinion drives the gear that can that is coupled to the shaft and then that is coupled to the hour hand and that will rotate. Then we've got the pinion here is for the for the minute and the minute gear which drives a minute hand is free wing around the shaft. So this solves quite a few problems doing it this way. Um, then around the edge of the clock, we've got LEDs. This is the digital element of the clock. So um, every hour, the LED will advance. I've just powered it up, so we haven't got an LED lit at the moment. So it will change to the next one on the hour. So I've got the serial monitor running at the moment. So we've got, if you see here, you can see it well enough. We're on GMT and it's 11.57. So in three minutes, the hour will move. So normally, if I hadn't just powered it on 11, otherwise known as sodium, would be lit. And then it runs through a sequence. Um, just, to, just as a feature, really, it flashes all the LEDs on in order forwards and backwards, then stays on the, obviously, the next hour. Um, so that's quite a nice little feature. The electronics is all done and um, code is executed by an Arduino Mega. It's a bit of a mess in here. And the real-time clock is sort of the, the heart of the system, if you like. These are the two stepper drivers. Um, then we've got on the side here, you can automatically change between GMT and BST, depending on what time of year it is. And then on the outside here, I've got four buttons to change the hour and the minute. So I'll just do one quickly. So obviously that's the hour backwards. So I'll set that back. Then the minutes obviously forwards and backwards. And then you can just set your time. Um, the gears were 3D printed. They were designed in Fusion 360, which was fantastic because it can automatically generate the gears. So that's a gear I drew on Fusion 360. Then, then I printed out on my Ender Pro 3 after slicing it with Cura. Uh, the plywood was cut using a, um, using the, we used the light burn software on our hack space and then our laser cutter just here. The laser cut, so I like using both all different methods in one project is quite good fun. Um, I normally do industrial systems for a living, so it's nice to do something a bit artistic. Um, the code is obviously done on Arduino. Um, I've got two versions of the code, one rather long-winded one um, that runs separate functions for every hour to do something different with the lights. Uh, one of the guys in the hack space then optimised that quite considerably um, and quartered the amount of lines of code. But, you know, I'm no expert and he, he is, he works as a C programmer for a living. Um, so we're now coming up to 10 seconds before the hour changes. So I'm just gonna go back here. So we should now increment to 12 o'clock, any second now, and then the our hand will move. I had advanced it and then we've got the light and then we're on 
and 12. I'd set the hour hand a little bit further than it should be when I was messing about. But that's how the clock works. Thanks for watching.